Good day, Grade Twelves. Welcome to this first lesson in Week Four. We're going to be looking at vertical projectile motion in this week. In this lesson, we're going to be looking specifically at free fall. A rock fall might block the road. A waterfall can be dangerous, but also very beautiful. Sometimes we make things fall for entertainment. We also might make ourselves fall. Hello, Grade Twelves. This lesson is about falling. Today we look at a special type of falling, free fall. We focus only on one part of free fall: an object moving downwards in a free fall, like this. What makes this ball move like this? Is it the gravitational force? Or to be more specific, the object's weight. Any two objects attract one another by gravitational force because they have mass. The ball and the Earth are two objects with mass, so they attract one another by gravitational force. It's funny to think that the ball pulls the Earth. It does so just as strongly as the Earth pulls the ball. For now, we will focus on the force called weight. Objects are pulled to the Earth by a gravitational force called the object's weight. An object is a free fall when its weight is the only significant vertical force on it. In other words, the air resistance is small enough to be ignored. We call an object which is in free fall a projectile. How does this projectile move in a downward free fall? Let's look at velocity. Imagine we let the projectile fall freely from the top of a very high building, and we measure its velocity at the end of each second of its fall. This is roughly what we would measure. Note that the projectile's velocity is downwards for this whole motion. What else do you notice? As time passes, the projectile's velocity changes. Can you remember what we call a change in velocity? That's right, a change in velocity is called acceleration. Projectiles accelerate as they fall. What causes acceleration? Yes, that's right, an unbalanced force. That is a resultant force causes acceleration. The projectile's weight is the force that accelerates it. Let's look more closely at the data about the projectile's change in velocity as it falls downwards. Notice that as time passes, the projectile's velocity increases. The projectile gets faster and faster as it falls downwards. Now, there's a pattern in how much the projectile gets faster. Can you see it? The time from zero to one second is called the first second of the fall. During this time, the projectile's velocity increases from zero to ten meters per second. The time from 1 to 2 seconds is called the second second of the fall. During this time, the projectile's velocity increases from 10 to 20 meters per second. During the third second, the projectile's velocity increases from 20 to 30 meters per second. And so on. All the time it falls. So, for every second the projectile falls, its velocity gets 10 meters per second faster. In other words, the velocity changes at 10 meters per second every second. Let's recap. The projectile's velocity is downward for the whole motion. The velocity increase is also downward. Let's calculate the projectile's change in velocity. So the projectile's change in velocity per time is 10 meters per second downward per second. We write this as 10 meters per second squared downward. Acceleration is the change in velocity per time, and it's also called the rate of change of velocity. It's also a vector quantity. That means that it has both magnitude and direction. This projectile accelerates at 10 meters per second squared downward. It isn't only this projectile which accelerates at 10 meters per second squared downward during free fall. All projectiles, in other words, all objects in free fall towards the Earth accelerate at 10 meters per second squared downward. We call this acceleration due to gravity. We shorten this to the symbol G. Now, actually, 
g isn't exactly 10 meters per second squared. Let's look at what the actual value for g is if the real data is used. It's closer to 9,8 meters per second squared. Sometimes we round this off to 10 to make things easier, which is what we did just now. This was the simplified data we used. When real data is used, it's not quite as easy at first to see the pattern as previously. Look carefully and the pattern becomes obvious. For every second the ball falls, its velocity increases 9,8 meters per second downward. So the ball's change in velocity per time is 9,8 meters per second downward per second. We write that as 9,8 meters per second squared downward. Now remember that the acceleration is a vector quantity. That means that it has both magnitude and direction. The magnitude of the acceleration due to the gravity g is 9,8 meters per second squared. Its direction is downward. Why is the direction of the acceleration due to gravity downward? Let me give you a hint. Acceleration is always caused by an unbalanced force. Therefore, the direction of the acceleration is always the same as the direction of the unbalanced force. In freefall, the projectile's weight is the unbalanced force, which causes acceleration due to gravity. And the direction of weight is always downward. That is why the direction of acceleration due to gravity, g, is always downward. Acceleration is a vector quantity, so it has direction. In vertical motion, we work along the y-axis of a Cartesian plane. We often take up as positive and down as negative. If we take down as negative, then 9,8 meters per second squared downward is the same as minus 9,8 meters per second squared. Be careful though. When we say the ball accelerates downward, we don't necessarily mean it moves downward. We discuss that in another lesson. Now, we saw that the ball's velocity changes as it falls. However, the ball's acceleration is 9,8 meters per second squared downward all the time as it falls. Now remember we said that all projectiles, not just our ball, fall freely to the earth at 9,8 meters per second squared. It does not matter if the projectile is big or small, heavy or light, as long as it is a projectile in free fall towards the earth. It will accelerate at Earth's acceleration due to gravity, g, which is 9,8 meters per second squared downward. So two projectiles fall together if they are dropped together. But this doesn't sound true, does it? What about the ball and the feather? They don't fall together. But are we forgetting something? Can you think what it is? The feather is not in free fall. Free fall only happens when the only significant vertical force is weight. But when I dropped the feather, there was another vertical force acting on it. What was that? Air resistance pushed the feather in the opposite direction to the feather's motion. So, the feather was not in free fall. So the feather was not accelerating at the acceleration due to gravity g. Air resistance also pushed the ball in the opposite direction to its motion. But the ball has a more compact shape and greater mass than the feather. So the air resistance on the ball was weak compared to its mass. It was so weak we can say it was negligible. So we can ignore the air resistance on the ball. The only significant vertical force on the ball is its weight. So the ball was in free fall. It did accelerate at the acceleration due to gravity g. Imagine we draw both the ball and the feather in a place with little or no air resistance. Then both of them will fall freely. For each, its weight would be the only significant vertical force. So each would be in free fall. Each would accelerate at the acceleration due to gravity g, 9,8 meters per second squared downwards. Then the feather and the ball would fall exactly together. Now isn't that amazing? Maybe it's so amazing it would be difficult to believe without actually seeing it. So let's watch. This is a vacuum tube. A vacuum tube is a glass tube with almost no air inside it. 
a machine has sucked most of the air out of it. So anything that falls inside the tube will experience little air resistance. Now we see a vacuum tube that contains a coin and a small cloth. Watch as the tube is turned. In this tube here, there's a piece of cloth and a coin. And this tube actually is a vacuum, which means it does not have any air in it. Now watch what happens when I flip the tube to cause the coin and the cloth to fall. Did you see how the cloth and the coin hit the bottom of the tubes together? That might have gone a bit too quickly. So let's watch it again. Focus when they first hit, not just on the bounce afterwards. Isn't that amazing? Both these objects were in free fall, so we call them projectiles. All projectiles move towards the Earth in the same way. They accelerate due to gravity. And in case you'd like to see this again, perhaps a little more clearly, have a look at the very short video at tiny.cc forward slash 68 M-H-A-X. This reference will also be in the series study guide. So far, we've looked at how velocity changes during freefall. Now let's look at how a projectile's position changes during freefall. The ball in freefall covers longer and longer displacements during each second it falls. That isn't surprising because the ball is getting faster and faster. This is because it is both accelerating downward and moving downward, making it go faster and faster. Well, that's it for today. Don't forget to check out our other videos in the series, especially the task video. Also, look at the Mindset website at www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.